Yesterday, we had a big deal in the travel space. Hyatt announcing a deal to acquire Apple Leisure Group for some $2.7 billion, uh, bringing Hyatt into the luxury travel space as well as bringing it into the all-inclusive resort space. Joining us now to discuss the deal and the reshaping of the Hyatt portfolio, President and CEO at Hyatt, Mark Hoplamese. And Mark, thanks so much for jumping on this morning. Let's just start with kind of how you guys thought about um, this deal in the context of one, a Hyatt that continues to change you know, its portfolio structures, you guys discussed on the call yesterday, but also um, with travel recovering, particularly leisure travel, um, and looking out you know, to, to what the future of travel might be post-pandemic. Uh, thanks, Miles. Good to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, first, I would say that uh, leisure travel has been uh, the most resilient and durable segment of the travel industry for a long time. It's not just a, a COVID and post-COVID uh, phenomenon where you, we've seen tremendous recovery in, tra in leisure travel. It's also been the case after downturns in the past. Um, you know, the, the power of human connectivity and human connection where people want to reunite with family and friends and loved ones and, and actually take a break uh, has never been more important for obvious reasons. And so this is really something that we think is going to continue to be um, a, a segment with tremendous growth within the within the leisure segment, uh, resorts in particular, and um, all inclusive resorts are a uh, very fast growing segment uh, in both the Americas and in Europe. We're going to be doubling our resort global resort presence uh, upon closing this deal. We're adding over 100 resorts uh, and we're growing our footprint in Europe by 60 percent. So it's a really transformative deal in terms of the markets that we can cover. Mark, it's Julie here. You guys have been transitioning to a more asset light model. So how does then this deal kind of fit into that? Yeah, it's actually, uh, it, it really unlocks uh, the next chapter of accelerated uh, transformation to being an asset light company. Um, we, we started off life as a public company uh, um, almost 12 years ago, and we were at a two-thirds, one-third split of earnings. Two-thirds of our earnings came from owned, owned and leased hotels and one-third came from our, our fee business. Um, by the time we, uh, we close the deal and, and uh, finish an additional $2 billion sell-down of assets that we announced yesterday, we will be at a 20-80 at a split, 20% from owned and leased to, and 80% from fees. And that's by 2024. So it's a, it's, it really is quite a significant uh, unlock. And the Aside from reducing the earnings from owned and leased hotels, this is really an asset like business that we're buying. So it's it's all fee based uh, income. So it really is transformative from a from a mix of earnings perspective. And then, Mark, I, I venture you don't make an acquisition of this size if you don't have some form of visibility into your business over the next 12 to 18 months. What are you seeing for 2022 booking trends? Well. Uh, what I would tell you is that the, uh, the best visibility that we have is in group business. Um, that's the longest lead time booking curve. Um, and the, the 2022 um, uh, progression was uh, tracking at about 15% below uh, 2019 levels. And we have an expectation, excuse me, <clears throat> that we'll see more bookings come through on the, on the group side. So we see that happening and, and that group business is not strictly corporate and association. There are leisure groups, there are sports groups and, and uh, other specialty groups. Um, that's the best uh, visibility we have into bookings for next year. But I, I'll tell you that the uh, momentum that we've seen um, through July has been remarkable in uh, leisure. The luxury leisure segment in particular is particularly durable because a lot of our, our core customer base have um, the means to be able to travel, and it is the first thing that they, they've turned to. So I would say that um, we do expect uh, leisure and business to be uh, vibrant into next year. Um, for the next few months, uh, a little harder to say because, uh, of course, people are still contending with the variability of the Delta variant and uh, and, and coping with that. but. We see this really as a trend, longer term trend, and something that we're we're looking forward to for the next five to ten years. Have Have you seen any cancellations of late because of uh, that you can tie to the to the COVID variant? The most acute downturn that we've seen uh, due to Delta is in China, 
um, the playbook that the Chinese government has has used uh, when they've had outbreaks of this type uh, is to be um, very aggressive about limiting travel and limiting activity. Actually, so there's um, there's a there are very very strict restrictions on movements, and in China, so in China we've seen a very precipitous drop in bookings. Um, our experience in history with that is that subsequent to those those um, those extensive restrictions. Uh, demand recovers quickly because it, you you end up with sort of a compressed uh, pent up demand that that springs into the future, and then in terms of uh, bookings into August, so sort of more real time, we have seen seen some declines, um, and I think part of that was in the Caribbean at least due to uh, the tropical storm that was threatening to be a hurricane, uh, Fred I think is they they named it, and then. Uh, apart from that, I, I surmise that there are some Delta variant uh, impacts at this point. Again, you know, we we do expect, especially given our training from the last 18 months, that this is not a smooth road and we're going to be uh, managing through and having to continually adapt and pivot. Like all of us, for sure, Mark. Um, finally, I want to circle back to the deal and ask you one more question about that, which is that you guys are taking on a billion dollars in debt to buy Apple Leisure. S&P said that you might be subject to a debt downgrade as a result. Um, what effect would that have if you if your bonds were downgraded to junk in terms of your borrowing ability going forward? Um, well, S&P is one of the rating agencies uh, that rates Hyatt. Uh, we have two other ratings, and um, I think uh, the, the, their, the other rating agencies uh, have been um, uh, more optimistic and supportive, I guess. Uh, I think the thing that I would say is that we got $2 billion of assets that we've committed to sell. The uh, The market for hotel assets, especially the, of the quality that we have, has been very robust. So we have uh, many, many alternatives as to how we can ultimately raise capital and pay down debt over time. We have uh, cherished our uh, asset, uh, our um, investment grade profile uh, since the time actually well before the time we were public and uh, as a company. And so I, my view is that we've, we've always run a conservative balance sheet. Um, and while we are taking on additional debt, in the short term, we expect to be able to pay it down and then some over the next three years as we sell down uh, assets. And then Mark, just finally on the, the asset sales, um, I'm just curious who's who's coming to you guys and, and, and wants to buy it. We hear so much about you know dry powder out there. Um, are these you know, what, what's the buyer profile, I guess, of the folks that, that you're talking to? And again, you know, as you guys mentioned, uh, two billion more of asset sales expected um, by 2024. Yeah. So, uh, first of all, REITs are active, um, public REITs and private REITs are active. Uh, there are there are several large private REITs that focus on hotel acquisitions uh, and then both private uh, equity, private investment uh, groups, as well as um uh, foreign sovereign funds uh, that support um, principles in the in the marketplace. So it really is from a variety of different um, sources, which is another reason why we're confident that we're going to be able to execute really well. We just were completing uh, since 2017 when we announced that we would start selling down assets. We uh, by the end of this year we we expect to have sold th over three billion dollars of assets at a 17.4 times. EBITDA multiple, which is well above what we predicted. Um, so we have a track record, and um, this is an incremental $2 billion, and uh, we think we're very confident we're going to be able to execute against that. All right, we'll leave it there. Appreciate the time this morning. Mark Hoppamazian, uh, CEO and President at Hyatt. Uh, talk to you soon, Mark. Thanks.